We are just about two days away from baseball that actually counts in the major leagues, at the very least, depending on when you're listening to this. But a lot of baseball that really counts has been playing, especially over the weekend in college baseball. Conference play started. We'll talk about some MLB draft update stuff, and we will also talk about the Guardians' third base position preview for 2024. So have a chance to talk about the GOAT on today's Locked On Guardians. You are Locked On Guardians. Your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show today. We're going to talk about the GOAT. Uh, Let's talk about the GOAT of one of... uh, daily sports stuff and that is our good friends over at prize picks today's episode is brought to you by prize picks the easiest most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports goes to prizepicks.com slash locked on mlb all one word and use code that code all lowercase locked on mlb for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars uh talking about the goat you of course mean um current uh all-time third base war leader terry turner or bill bradley i'm kidding i'm kidding Obviously, that's who I meant. Everybody knew that's who I meant, Jeff. Yeah. When, I, when I did that I, intro, I that's whoever, who I meant. Now that I've mentioned <laughs> history, this is, show is going to get 300 it's views, say, as we nobody, know. Nobody likes no, history. It, it, for whatever, yeah, people do not like history. So uh, we have learned that lesson the hard way. So let's let's oh, talk well. about, instead, let's dive into the... People love the draft. The that's draft. Love, Jeff. People, people here for the draft. Uh, yeah, we didn't get a chance to talk about some uh, college baseball and MLB draft stuff on Monday because obviously with the Miles Straw news and other roster decisions being made and that took precedence. And um, if you haven't had a chance, go back and listen to that show. Also, thank you for making Lockdown Guardians your first listen today. Everywhere you get podcasts every day, whether it's on uh, well, Google, Google's going away. You got, you know, Spotify, Stitcher. Is it? I mean, God, um, they've had like three or four failed attempts so far. Yeah, Google Podcast is exiting the exiting stage left here in a couple days. <laughs> Everything that's, is that's failing for them. I know that's what I use, and it keeps telling me you have to move your podcast to YouTube. And I'm like, okay, fine, but like, yeah, I don't. When know. Google Music so went I away, I forgot to do that, and I lost all of my Google Music. You just <laughs> so, you can't trust yeah. Google. I guess not, but you can trust YouTube. We're on YouTube every day. We talk yeah. about the Guardians at five days a week. Not a lot of places, almost I nowhere. Think, I think we're it. Guardians talk five days a week. There is almost nowhere. Often, often uh, imitate or often du- duplicated, but never imitated. I don't know how that's saying. We're goes, not even duplicated. I don't think there's anyone else no. out there who uh, is really. You team every day. That's what we do. Anyway, um, important to note at this point for college baseball and draft purposes that conference play has started. So yes, things Jeff, get harder. King of this note, yeah, you are the king of this note, though. That yeah, um, early you know February and early March, you got non-conference play, so you've got you know, big time programs playing small programs. So you watch the smaller program players to see what they do. And then now it's conference play. We can start talking about um, some of the conference, big team conference players. And of course, I have to start with uh, the biggest performers of the weekend. Uh, kind of. Charlie Condon had a big weekend, of course. And Travis Bazana is bananas right now. He has yeah. four leadoff home runs in four straight games. So let me ask you right now, just real quick off the cuff. If the draft was tomorrow, is it Travis Bazana? Is it Charlie Condon? Or is it the rest of the field? Who are you taking? If you had to make a bet with our friends on FanDuel, Bazana, Condon, I, or the field? Of course if the draft was tomorrow. This is a team that goes, and I know people don't always like watch the Cape, and that's fine. It's you know, it's not like it's on TV, I don't believe. You can maybe watch it on YouTube. But like that's what Chase Delatter does. All Friends made. of Baseball America. It, it's Hunter Gaddis actually had a pretty bad junior year. But he was good on the Cape. They put more value in that Cape sometimes than junior sure. level performances. And I just keep coming back to Chase Delotter was the MVP of the Cape. Travis Bazana is the MVP of the Cape. Go back to our interview with Jeff Ponce. Listen to that where he compared Travis Bazana's work ethic and desire to win being at a Kobe level. That stuff matters. And not say that Condon isn't a hard worker. Not say that Condon know. is a know. phenomenal talent uh, as well. But Pazana just seems a little bit otherworldly to me. And he's not just a second baseman. And for all the people saying he has no power, yes, Condon leads uh, NCAA. Great power hitter. 
better athlete than he probably gets credit for. But Bazana's third in the nation at home runs. Like these are, he went and drove four hours each way to work on his swing and to perfect it. It's that's, I don't know if you can go wrong with either of these guys. And honestly, to me, it's a tight top three with those two and Chase Burns. Burns and Smith had fantastic weekends yet again, maybe two of their best performances. And that's saying a lot because Smith dominated Bazana earlier in the year. Uh, so Smith is maybe Burns just just on the outside of that conversation is a tight top three. I understand anyone who wants to go with any of them. To me, I think Bazana fits more their style. Uh, was it Tom Hamilton's already talking him up on, on broadcasts? We know and Tom loves his college baseball, so we know he's paying attention. And um, let's be honest, in a weird way, him being Australian with that accent is extra marketable. Like that's going to be it something is. that stands no, it definitely out. Definitely is, and he's an international star. It is, and this team needs that. That matters. They sure do. It, they they need that. And uh, let's say Condon goes in the big leagues. He's a forty home run guy. Guess what? That's marketing as well. But um, there are things that are harder. Every guy is harder to market in the city. So getting the guy with the international edge is. is I don't think that affects the draft, but it's a bonus. Let's put it that way. It's, it's a sprinkle on top. But I just think Bazana is doing it all. Uh, so it's kind of you can't go wrong like for as much as people want to bag on the top of this draft i mean condon and bazana are being you're still getting crazy these yeah they're not langford and cruz and skeins of a year ago but go back to 22 there was not jackson holiday has just slowly risen like there were even on draft day there were people like oh this is not the right draft pick they should take jordan lawler this is not the right draft pick not you know they should take um uh andrew uh jones's kid right it's like mm -hmm. th that was not settled. Torkelson has struggled. The 2022 class is, was not, you know, Henry Davis. Like, I, I think both these guys are better than Henry Davis. Like, for as much as people want to have issues with this class, and trust me, after you pass pick eight, it thins out to about pick 40. That 36 pick could be a little yeah. lean. Um, that's where there's an issue. Uh, if you're a fan of another one coming to get draft talk, I'll say like, hey, it is lean there. But at the top... There's a top three. Grab one of those three and feel happy. Yeah, I don't think Cleveland can go wrong here between those two. We'll see. There's a lot of time between now and in July. We'll see what happens. But yeah, to me, Bazana, it's it's the same thing. It's everything we've heard about him with the makeup, and he's he's putting all that work into the games. Like it's translating very quickly, which is very hard sometimes to see swing changes materialize in games that fast, and they are yeah. already taking off for him. Good and point. to be fair, I mean. Condon hit a home run off Ben Hess, who has been considered a first round arm. And, you know, we did, you have mentioned about Bazana. Why does he get credit for, you know, he's facing bad competition? Like Washington has had its moments in college baseball, but it's not great. But, you know, as we talked about, when you're facing competition that's a little, you know, below your talent level, you got to dominate. And that's what Bazana is doing. So that's important. We had a lot of talk on uh, X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it these days, about Jack Caglione. We learned from, um, a uh, friend on, on Twitter who, who follows us. I don't know if he listens. Maybe he does listen. Uh, down to the, our buddy, though, that was like, I was asking what was Jack Caglione's chase rate because he's, his exit, his 90% exit velocity is absurdly high. It's fantastic. And his, zone, yeah. and his zone contact is great. The guy makes a lot of contact, but the chase rate is the separator. And it's a, it was 40% a year ago. It's 37% right now. And he had a ton of walks on Sunday. And that's with non-conference play. So that might actually, yeah. when you get into conference play, be higher than 40%. Yeah, so I have, I have concerns. I, I just don't, again, he's he's a very, very high-level, high-risk, high-reward talent. It, it just at 1-1, one, one, that is a lot. All right, we want to talk about some players real quick before we get into third base stuff. We are going to talk about the third base position preview. We'll explain how we're kind of back-ending the end of the show. But, uh, Jeff, you want to talk about Corey Collins. So before we move on to other stuff, Third base wise, uh, jump into Corey Collins very quickly. Corey Collins yeah. is fun. Uh, also hit a home run off Ben Hess. Is a was a top 100 prospect for the 2020 draft. It was a weird draft year. We don't have to dive into that. Both perfect game and MLB had him uh, in the top 100. He got to campus and slowly performed well. Had pop times as a high schooler, I believe, in the 1.8 to 1.9 range, which is fantastic. Strong arm. Got hurt last year. Um, been a solid steady performer, but has kind of that background of high production had three home runs, just like Condon this past weekend. He's their leadoff hitter. And then after, um, so it goes, it goes Collins then Condon, which is great. That's fantastic lineup, um, by the, the, the manager there, 
But I think you're looking at a guy who I think can catch, isn't catching, coming back from a hand injury, but has that pedigree, is performing really well, getting overshadowed because he's playing with one of the best guys in the country. So if you want an under-the-radar guy, Corey Collins is is definitely someone to look. Good background, fantastic performance. And then I believe we saw also some steady cape data for him. I could be wrong with that. Some, we looked at a lot of guys before Yeah, the show. it was okay. It was okay. But uh, yeah, I think he's just a, he's one of those under-the-radar guys, senior. Uh, so who knows they where do. he'll go, but is he's a senior guy at this point who, again, was a top 100 prospect four years ago. Keep an eye on that. We'll spend a little bit more time on some SEC players uh, coming back here, and then we'll get to Jose Ramirez, third base prospects, and we'll end the show with a little more college baseball slash draft content. We'll talk about third base draft prospects and this year's draft. Stay Are there here. any? Well, there may not be any first base uh, draft prospect, third base draft prospects in this year's draft. There is a fantastic site, uh, Prize Picks. The nice thing with Prize Picks is when you look at, you know, other similar companies, you have to face the experts, the guys who have advanced mathematics degrees and have written scripts and know how to access GitHub, which I, I wish I knew how to. I don't know how to use GitHub, but these guys know how to do it and they use it to win. And you just to throw your money down the drain. Not the case with prize picks. Prize picks, it's just you versus the numbers. You don't have to worry about someone who's who's got all this advanced knowledge. It's you versus the numbers. It's you're looking at two to six stat categories and you just pick more or less. It is that easy. Head over to prize picks. You pick your stats that you know that you're feeling comfortable with. And you know, it's as simple as that. So download the app or go to the webpage. That's how I signed up. I went to the webpage and you want to go to, um, you can use the promo code locked on MLB, or if you type, you know, pricepicks.com slash locked on MLB, all lowercase, all one word, it'll take you to it. And your first match deposit, they're going to match up to hundred bucks. So that's free money. So check that out. Remember pick more, pick less. It's that easy prize picks. It's just you versus numbers. We all hate numbers. I hated numbers in high school. I was I, I not a good math student. <laughs> I was not a good math student. Uh, I don't think it matters what Luke Holman's score in math is. He had another fantastic weekend. He shut down the Florida lineup, which is which is pretty good. You know, we talk about Jack Caglione, um, not even the home run leader on his team. There's Kobe, no, Kobe Shelton, Shelton, who we'll talk about later in the, the show, hopefully. Uh, Cade Cur Curlin is a good hitter. Luke Heyman, they have some good hitters in that lineup, honestly, Florida. It's, a, it's an interesting team in terms of college baseball anyway. Luke Holman, though, for LSU, six innings, a uh, hit, a run, three walks, 13 strikeouts, 104 pitches. Great weekend for Holman. I, I, a lot of people think that Holman is a, a, probably a comp pick. I don't know. We, we keep saying, like, oh, this guy's rising up the draft board. He's rising up the draft board. And we keep thinking, ah, he won't be there at 36 or he won't be there at, at, you know, at 48 or whatever. Not all these guys can make it up to the top 30. There's only 30 spots. So some of these guys are going to drop down, whether it's, um, due to under slot deals going ahead of them or, um, you know, just a number of factors. And we're still four months away. But Luke Coleman is a guy I've been keeping an eye on, and he had a great performance against Florida. So that was exciting to see um, someone I would not be upset with if, if Cleveland was interested in at 36. Um, yeah, she's yeah. got some interesting pitchers. Alabama transfer, who's there, you know, moved in to become their Friday starter over Thatcher Hurd. And I think I mentioned him last week because he finally gave up his first earned run last weekend. He was mm -hmm. one of the three guys who hadn't done it with Prager and um, Jamie Arnold. And the, I believe he didn't give up a run this weekend. So he he bounced back. He did and, give up a run. Oh, sorry. Was it one run. Yeah, he okay. gave up one run. Still, so, yeah. um, one run against a, a pretty very good lineup. Good lineup. So. I, uh, I I think he is certainly someone to watch with guys like Santucci and Hartle definitely sliding. He is the guy who's yeah. replacing them. Could be. Uh, Kavaris Tears. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm, maybe think of, uh, what was that? Not another teen movie where they talked about a, a seal tear. You remember that? It was spoofing on the Friday Night Lights. Do you remember that movie? I, you know, the sad thing is I, I think I own that movie somewhere. I don't remember exactly, <laughs> but that is the one. I don't know. That movie definitely amused me. I think I own that um, somewhere. Yeah, not not a great reference because, you know, the guy cares ACL. But Kavaris Tears, red shirt, sophomore from Tennessee, having a fantastic year, had a great weekend, had a home, uh, I think a home run, uh, 112 off the bat. Tennessee played what we say they play Old Miss this weekend. Is that who it was? Yes, they played so, Old Miss. 
oldness is fine. They're not great right now. Better for the hitters than the pitchers. Yeah, there's no Doug Nikhazy there not dominating, but uh, Kavaris Tears had a really good weekend, though. Like I said, he had a home run, um, hitting 405 this year with a 500 on base, 772 slugging. Some good Cape data, I believe, a year. No, he hasn't played in the Cape, I don't think. Um, but, you know, even one to one strikeout to walk, 16 16 walks, 16 strikeouts. Uh, very athletic player, an outfielder, someone I'd be very interested in. He doesn't strike out a lot, and he's really having a fantastic year. I, I, I have a horrible disease of falling for Tennessee hitters. Jordan Beck, Trey Lipscomb. I, I really enjoy uh, Dylan Drayling, Billy Amick, and Blake Burke. I have a very bad problem with Tennessee hitters. They're not all going to work out. But for some reason, I really enjoy Tennessee hitters, so that may he's, be a, a bias for me. He's super know. interesting. Um was it his Dante Hightower is, is a relative. Mm. Jason Maxwell is a relative. Athletic bloodlines. Cleveland likes athletic yeah. bloodlines. Didn't play at all. Redshirt is a freshman. Barely played last year. This is his first time. One, I think you said the one to one strikeout to walk ratio, lower yeah. numbers, um, high batting average. Does feel kind of like up in their range. Uh, a lot of a lot of fun things. He's a fun player that was really not so much on my radar. Here's a guy who I wanted to add, Brian Holiday. Um, he has one heck of a leg kick. Uh, if you have not seen him, <laughs> so go check that out. But Oklahoma the reason State, not Ohio State, if you're watching on YouTube, yes. Uh, the reason to check not him out the is OSU, just OSU. Oh, there's there's a few <laughs> things that are going positively for him. One, he is I think tenth in the nation in strikeouts, so he's got a high strikeout rate. Two, his K per or his walk per nine is one six six. He's not walking anyone. He has been. This is his third college, Ohio or Ohio. Whew. Cleveland has a history of taking these guys who bounce around Zane um, Morehouse a year ago, Morehouse, um, Frank Gualamon. You know, it's like the fact is that there's sometimes more growth because the guy hasn't had that consistency. Holiday is five eleven. He has a heck of a leg kick. Uh, the other thing is he didn't pitch much in the Cape in 23, but in 22, he is great in the Cape in 42 innings. Uh, so he has good Cape performance. He has all this stuff that fit them. Undersized righty fits them. Some of the video when their guys on base, he pulls that leg kicked out. I don't know if he works with that leg kick. It is, it's something to watch. But statistically, he has a lot of things that fit what they go for. He's been an absolute fantastic performer. Um, I don't love this past weekend. Let's see. I think I do. I still have it pulled up. Yeah. So against TCU, we know it's a good team. Anthony Silva is a potential first round pick. Nine innings, fourteen strikeouts, four hits, zero walks. Gave up two earned runs. They have two wild pitches and a hit batter. 113 pitches. This is where Justin Campbell pitched and his arm is like falling off. So hopefully it's not the same, but it's only one year for holiday as opposed to three for Campbell. It's true. Peyton Badfield also, also from there. And I don't know, that didn't last long. We were really high in Peyton Badfield at one point, And it just never when really that trade really first happened. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the the curse of of trading for for Tampa Bay Rays, unfortunately. So yeah, a fun weekend in, in college baseball. A lot of good, a lot of good matchups, and we talked about Con a little bit. Oh, Billy, I mentioned Billy Amick too. We'll talk about him later in the show too, as a, as a third base prospect in the draft to watch. But um, yeah, again, it's it's conference play time, so you can start looking at those bigger conferences, like we said, Charlie Condon. Um, you know, I guess the Pac-12 not as good as we probably. It's not. Would hope it's, it's not no, great. It's, so it's not great. is only going to face a a number, but if, you know if he keeps dominating those guys, at least that's the good sign. Um, you know, Condon will continue to face some good SEC pitching. I'll be really watching when they face LSU and all their arms. I know Thatcher Hurd has not been great, but still an interesting arm. They have Gage Jump. They have Holman, like we said. So they still have some interesting arms. So we'll be watching that there. Obviously, um, has not faced Florida yet. Florida's got a couple of decent arms, including. Jack, who we think is more of a pitcher than a hitter. Um, so, yeah, keep watching that stuff. And then the smaller school guys, I mean, yeah, you have to go back and look at some of their data when they played bigger school guys. I mean, I just saw a mock draft today that had Mike Sirota falling quite a bit. So, you know, we really liked Mike Sirota when we thought Cleveland was picking in, the, in like the 10, like the 8 to 10 range. He's not playing that great. He could fall to 36. And, and honestly, if whatever they do at 1 1, I would not uh, hate it, Mike Sirota at 36. No. no. Sign me because it's it's not just that he performed well in the Cape, but the guy had good athletic tools. If you can work, and he's a no you know, doubt center fielder. We didn't bring this up either too before with Charlie Condon. Didn't have good Cape data. We were talking about the one one yeah. debate with. Right now, it kind of seems like it's this is right now. Again, things could change in four months, but 
right now we kind of feel like Bazana Condon is the one to punch. Bazana had the cape data and Condon did not. So if that's if that's what it comes down to, I mean, it'll also come down to bonus demands and how Cleveland can sp- spread around the bonus pool. But um, cape data may end up being a separator at the end of the day, too. So, yep, 100 percent. And I, I kind of forgot about that. All right. We wanted to talk about Jose Ramirez and the Guardians third base preview this year. How many years of high level Jose Ramirez do the Guardians have left? And do they have any third base prospects in the pipeline to replace them if the move to DH is ever coming? We might have to get into the draft and then draft someone in this year's draft. So stick around for third base preview coming up. You could probably make some good bets on a FanDuel. I think tomorrow I'll check back and see if there's any good Jose Ramirez bets on FanDuel. But the first round, the first weekend of the college basketball tournament is over. If you are not like me, I am. The only, I only entered one bracket pool as my wife's teacher, my wife's school group, her teacher friend started one. Um, I'm in second. I'm doing great. I got some bad picks. I will admit I had some bad picks, but I'm in second place, so I'm doing good. I am not crying over my bracket being busted. But if you are, sign up for FanDuel right now. You can bet on every game of the tourney, whether you're betting on a big upset, a one seed coming up in the Sweet 16 over the weekend. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports arc. Right now, if you are a new customer, great time for you to get on FanDuel. You can get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. So go on there, throw down a $5 bet, make it a prop bet, you know, on the NBA or – um MLB, whatever. Game start Thursday, right? You can take a quick prop bet on Thursday. And then you can win that bet, even if it's a low money bet. You win, you get 200 bucks from FanDuel if you're a new customer, okay? And you can use it on point spreads, money lines for the NCAA tournament this weekend. You can even pick who is going to win it all at the end of the dance. So just visit FanDuel.com slash lockdown to bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right. (laughs) <laughs> gonna play everyone's favorite game is <laughs> make Jeff make Jeff the bad, the bad guy. Um, I we're talking about third base today, and the, qu- the really question is, and, and if you're gonna ask why you, why did you do a position preview show com- entirety for all the other positions and not third base, who for the best player on the team? And the argument is he is the best player on the team. What really can we say about Jose Ramirez at this point? I mean, he is the greatest player on this team. He is the greatest player in a generation right now for Cleveland. He has stayed. He he chose under market deal to stay and finish his career in Cleveland. He is the the straw that, that stirs the drink to echo one of our commenters the other day on the straw episode. He is one of the greatest players of all time in franchise history. So what more can we really say? And I hate, I, again, I hate to be negative to saying, but we have to ask he's eight, he's 30. He's going to be 31 this year. At some point he is 31 right now. Um, how many years does Jose Ramirez have left at his high levels? I mean, last year was a good year for Jose Ramirez. It was a good year. It was not the best year by his standards. The man has set himself some very lofty standards. So if you erased all the rest of his history of his career and you looked at last year's numbers, you would say, wow, that's a fine year. Great, great player. Really good year. 24 home runs, 28 steals, 831 OPS. But Jose Ramirez is not just any player. He is an MVP level player. He has been an MVP level player. But the question is, how much more does he have left at this level? I think I I, I think we have differing opinions on this. That's what I'll say. I mean, I my thought process is I, I do think we're starting to see the decline. Now he's so fantastic. I'm not like saying he's done or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. No, he is still going to be a guy who's like in the four to six range. Where I think we're just going to start seeing instead of being like, the six to higher. I think we're just going to see 5.1 like, last year. Yeah. So yeah. I think we're seeing more of like a five this year, maybe a five next year, and then a four, a four. And, you know, it, it that is why I talked about yesterday's show. You can go back and listen. Um, people seem to enjoy it for the most part that he's probably going to see more time with DH. And it's, listen, guys, his, thing, though. guys, his size tend to wear it out. Like there's not a lot of fun size players who existed strongly. I mean, Jose Altuve is doing a good job with it. And Jose, Jose is a fantastic baseball player. He's not necessarily the guy who's always keeping himself in the top of shape, you know, where that's what often helps guys not wear down. I'm not degrading him. He's in fine shape, but he's not like 
the physical specimen. It's like the guys who really go out of the way to become physical specimens tend to have longer aging curves. His he's not as much that. So when you, you add in the height and that, he's gonna be great this year and he should be great next year but then we're going to see him slip closer to, to average i think in the years beyond that which is fair i mean father time is is undefeated to say and um i don't want to make a comparison to grady size more because that will just depress me but well, it was health look at Jose, if you look at jose ramirez's games played in his career so 2016 was obviously the start of, of this fantastic run for him um, outside of 2019, when he had to battle the handmade injury and he had surgery and he came back and hit those home runs, and then he was done for the year. He has never played less than 152 games. So that's 10 games off. Some of those are DHs, but I would, if they're going to go with this open DH approach right now, and they don't Menzardo up and they're trying to keep an open spot and, and, and utilize this versatility, I would love to see Gabby Arias play third base once a week. And then David for, I don't know, David probably played third base in the minors. I don't know, put it, put him against lefties. Um, over there against lefties, you can move Rocchio around. You can move Tyler Freeman around. If you want to put Ramon Laureano in center or Brennan in center, and you want to give Freeman a day, put him at third base and DH Jose. I would love for Jose to play 150 games and maybe 30, 30 games or DH. That would be fan fantastic for Jose. That would be what's best for him long-term. And if by some grace, Cleveland gets to October, if they win 85 games, and win this division, which it might, they might, um, he could be well-rested last year. 475 slugging percentage was his lowest, um, since 2019, when he obviously kind of had that um, early season tailspin before he pulled out of it at the end of 2018 there, 479 that year. So this is his lowest slugging percentage, honestly, since 2016 when he started to play full time and he really wasn't a power hitter that year. So there is that concern. But if you go and look at I know I know just taking a quick snapshot of Savant does not tell a whole story. It's not a great story. Still a lot of red there. He is never a guy who's had a high barrel percentage or a high hard hit rate. He has never been that guy. The chase rate was a little bit up last year. So that's the thing you're going to look at is um, it was 39. I'm sorry. It was, it was 55%. It was 49. So it's actually down from 2022, 2021. It was 72% centile. So the last two years, the chase rate has kind of dipped. So that's a little concerning, but the strikeout rate is still in a fantastic zone. It hasn't gone up at all. The walk rate hasn't gone down. The swinging strike rate, the amount of the amount of times he whiffs, the whiff rate is not up at all. He has never been a guy who has relied on exit velocity, truthfully. It's all about pulling the ball in the air for Jose Ramirez. He continues to do that. When the strikeouts start to creep up, when the walks start to taper down, when the whiff rate starts to climb a little bit, I will start to get a little bit leery and worry about where things are going. Um, but for right now, I don't have a whole lot of concerns. I I mean, I still think there's a change. He still has an MVP level season in him at this point, I think. And you know, with Shohei Otani out of, out, of, out of the league, we saw a little bit of a of a slip in those numbers, though. I mean, the strikeout rate is still below what it was in years past. The walk rate's down slightly, and we can attribute that to the chase rate a little bit too. Um, yeah. But with Otani, with I, I still think there's an MVP level player a season left in there. I think. All the greats have that last run, and, and Otani's out of the league. He might even be out of the DL. Might even be out of baseball by the time this episode airs. Who knows? Um, I still think there's a chance for another six-win season and then a 30-30 year in there. I just think Jose is a special talent, and I, you know, a guy that I've never felt like betting against his entire career, and I would, I wouldn't start now. What I would bet against Jeff is the prospects in the system. It is not fun. It's it pretty is. bad. Diane Frias, who we kind of like, but he's you know, maybe more of a utility guy. Uh, we could we could mention Daniel Schiemann as a utility guy. He's a good third baseman. He might. I don't know. We don't have the time today to talk about Daniel Schiemann, but I know people but are saying, like, oh, he might make his debut this year, but I don't know how he's going to make this roster outside of them trading Atena or an Arias. But, it's a, it, you know, it's the a guy hard deserves a cup of coffee. Yeah, but yeah. he is he's putting the work. It's been impressive in terms of what he's turned himself, I believe a 16th rounder out of 33rd BYU. Rounder. 33rd, 33rd like, rounder. So he's 27 years of age. He's done a lot of things and we should just like kind of appreciate the amount of work that dude put in to get to, to the point where I, sure. I think he's going to play in the big league someday. I don't necessarily know if it's going to be this year. I don't even know if it's going to be a Cleveland, but he put right. in the time to get there. And that's, that's a, he might be their best third base prospect. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. And then Raphael mirrors. I'll just mention because, uh, he could move to third. I think the frame is very big. I think he could move off shortstop and third base might be his home. That's your best bet. They might have to draft somebody. 
And that's where we get into the draft prospects. Cam Smith having a great year. You mentioned to me off the air before we started recording that the strikeout rate is way up. So, and, and honestly, he's not even going to be a Cleveland's pick yeah. because he's going to go in the first round and they're not taking him one, one. My guys are this. I love Xander Darby from, from UC Santa Barbara. I love Billy Amick from Tennessee. There's questions whether Mount Amick can play third base. Uh, Walker Janik from Sam Houston is really interesting. Um, they've drafted from Sam Houston state before. So those are a couple guys to keep an eye on. And then Adam Tellier from Wake Forest is the infielder who is a senior transfer from Ball State. He is having a great year for them. Kind of a senior sign, maybe more of a utility guy, but uh, kind of fun in his own right. You got a couple guys I know you like it at this position for the draft too. Yeah, I guess the big guy for me is probably Carson um, De Martini from La Tech. He already had like really strong data as a right-handed hitter. I want to say right-handed. Watch me be totally wrong on that. I he hits the ball hard, no matter what hand it is. If you want a power guy, it's, I'm sorry. No, he is left-handed. I had a feeling it was that, but all three years, like this is a guy who's been a day one starter. His worst OP, OPS in college was a 1.048. He had um, 15, 10, and this year he's already at 13 home runs. Talking about a guy who had a chase rate below 20%, a Z contact above 85 last year, a barrel at 27, a lot of good data. Um, he hits the ball really hard. He's really strong. I think in my last mock, I had him going to Baltimore um, with their first pick. So, yeah, he, okay. I think he, you know, for when we talk about guys who are moving down, he's a guy who's moving up. Uh, strong third baseman. Um, I think he can stick there. He, he's kind of the guy you hope could get down there. Colby Shelton uh, actually leads Florida in home runs. Uh, the question is, yeah, he, Jack, he's, yeah. Yeah, it, it, he's uh, a transfer. He's playing short for them. I don't think he has any future there. He's probably more of a second baseman than a third baseman. But, uh, uh, you know, there are those who think he could be a third baseman. And he's just been highly productive. Another guy who the another guy who fled Alabama, I believe, with all the mess that was there last year. Um, a little bit more of a chase, but higher barrels and, you know, just hits the ball hard. Um, draft eligible sophomore, I want to say, with him. So there's some interesting third baseman in the draft this year. Um you know, it, we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, once they take Bazana, we'll have to see who's left. Yeah. All right. Tomorrow we will do our first base position preview. We probably we had a lot of requests for that one. So we'll do yeah. that. We'll get to second base probably during the season. We'll try to get a bonus episode or something or we'll get to that in season. We'll do that. Yeah. We'll have our season predictions coming to you on Thursday when real games actually start. And then from there. It counts. Got baseball We're on. We're ready to go. The West Coast will be an interesting test for us to start the year, but I, uh, why do they do this to we're it ready? Year? Why is it? Every I know we've, we've been, yeah, year. It's, it's been like this every year. So <sighs> we're going to be here five days a week for you. No matter what happens, no matter where they're playing, we are here for you five days a week to talk about the guardians from yep. Jose Ramirez down to who they might draft this year. Yeah. We got it all covered. So thank you all for joining us. Remember to rate and review daily. Cause that helps. Uh, remember to leave comments, tell a friend, Thank you all. Uh, shout out to all of our everydayers and go, go Guardians, go.